Welcome back to Dermatology Explained. Today we'll be speaking about ashy dermatosis, otherwise known as erythema dyschromicum persans. Ashy dermatosis is a form of acquired dermal macular hyperpigmentation. It is characterized by the development of persistent gray blue hypomelanotic cutaneous macules, for which no specific cause can be identified. Though it has been observed that erythema dyschromicum perstans occurs most often in darkly pigmented Latin Americans, there have been occasional reports in Asians and Caucasians. The disorder favors individuals with intermediate skin types, Fitzpatrick 3 and 4. In general, there is no gender predilection. However, a few authors have reported that women were more commonly affected compared to men. Whilst the age of onset is variable, erythema dyschromicum perstans frequently appears during the first to third decade of life. This entity was first described by Dr. Ramirez in the 1950s. In Dr. Ramirez's initial Spanish description, it was likened to Cinderella because of the association of her sitting by the fireplace and the ashes in the folklore and the similarity with the ashy appearance of these lesions. In terms of the causes of erythema dyschromicum perstans, some authors believe it to be a variant of lichen planus pigmentosis because of its histological features. However, the underlying cause is unknown. Some theories to explain the potential etiology includes a genetic predisposition, contact allergy to cosmetics and hair dyes, toxic effects of chemicals such as ammonium nitrate, intestinal parasite infections by whipworm, which is shown here, viral infections, as well as adverse effects of drugs and medications. However, to date, there has not been a rigorous epidemiological study examining the potential triggers of erythema dyschromicum perstans. In terms of the features, most patients present with a slow progression of grey-brown to grey-blue macules and patches. The presence of an erythematous peripheral margin measuring 1 to 2 millimetres in width is actually uncommon. When present, these borders eventually disappear after several months. Most lesions measure between 0.5 to 2.5 centimeters, but they can be larger. Although the lesions may vary in shape, many are oval, with their long axes following skin cleavage lines, thus assuming a pattern similar to that of pityriasis rosea. The macules may slowly enlarge and multiply to involve large areas of the body. The most common sites of involvement are the neck, trunk, and proximal arms, and the distribution is usually symmetric. Characteristically, there is sparing of the palms, soles, scalp, and mucous membranes. The histological findings vary depending on the phase of the life of the lesions. In the border of the active lesions, vacuolization of the basal layer, occasional colloid bodies, and a very mild lichenoid lymphocytic infiltrate are typically seen. In the more inactive ashy-colored lesions, a considerable amount of pigment incontinence with variable epidermal change including atrophy and effacement of the normal pattern of reti ridges is seen. These changes are often indistinguishable from those observed in other types of post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. In terms of the course of the disease, the initial erythematous phase tends to settle after several months. The pigmentation is persistent with a tendency to extend gradually over years. Spontaneous resolution is observed sometimes in prepubertal children. This is an image demonstrating Langer lines, which are skin tension lines. The lesions in erythema dyschromicum perstans tends to follow these Langer lines. An example is shown here. What is the management of erythema dyschromicum perstans? In general, the proposed treatments for erythema dyschromicum perstans are generally unsuccessful. They include sun protection, topical corticosteroids, retinoids, chemical peels, oral antibiotics, dapsone, antimalarials, antifungals, and systemic corticosteroids. Based on a case series, clofazamine was reported as a successful treatment. However, remission can occur. Dapsone is another treatment for erythema dyschromicum perstans. What are the differential diagnoses? These include acquired dermal macular hyperpigmentation, lichen planus pigmentosis, drug-induced skin pigmentation, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, urticaria pigmentosa, incontinentia pigmenti, pinta infection, and leprosy. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you found this video informative. We'll see you at the next one.